In this video we're putting together this analog gauge cluster for your sim racing rig. In the last couple of videos we've been going over the process for putting this uh, gauge cluster together as a tribute to the Ferrari 40. I'm trying to get it to look as much like what's in that car as I can. The end result being is once it's all done I better plug it into my sim game and all the telemetry and speed and revs and all those sorts of things will come out on these analog gauges. If you've not seen any of those videos, basically what we use is a piece of software called SimHub and we can use this to pull the data out of the game and then put it onto our motors within our, our dashboard to make them all move in unison with the game that we're playing. I'm not going to cover that software in too much detail, I've got another video prior to this one which covers that in quite a bit of detail and my website has code examples to get you up and running. So in this video we're just putting everything together into the gauge cluster, hooking up to a game and seeing what happens. So let's get on with it. We'll just start with the Speedo or Taco design, they're both identical except the faces obviously one's got speed on it and the other one's got um, revs and on the front we've just got the front face, it's got a bit of acrylic in there just for uh, protecting the inside from dust and things like that. Behind that we put on this um, cone shape sort of thing that is, um, sort of reflects this, that, that from the car itself and it sort of just clips on on top and then on inside that goes the gauge itself so there's a bit of a story behind the gauge if you take a look at your car's dashboard at night you'll notice that aside from the numbers the entire dash is completely black when jason was making his own gauges he initially considered using paper it looks fine during the day or without backlighting but once the backlight hits the fibers of the paper become visible you could opt for thicker paper, but that would block more light. So he decided to try spray painting on clear acrylic instead. Now with diode laser cutters like Jason's, it can't cut clear acrylic due to the wavelength. However, when the laser hits the paint, it blasts it off, leaving a clear area where light can easily pass through. As you can see, the result is almost flawless. Afterward, he sprayed white and red paint on the back to fill in the cut areas. While this looked great, it chipped easily. So for this smaller gauge, he tried vinyl wrapping instead, and the finish was perfect. Plus, it was much more durable and protected. I don't think anybody's going to crucify you over printing off your dials and, and using that. Um, it's a bit fussy, I don't want to make it look like an actual car gauge. So, I mean, that's what I went with, but that's a perfectly fine way of doing it. So once it's done, that just goes in the groove inside the housing. And on the back of that, we put um, this extra housing, and you'll it's notice it's got a couple of little cutouts in there. And this is for the LEDs to peek through all the neopixels. So it'll go, there's got a gasket that goes on top, and it's pretty amazing. These laser cutters, how it just cuts it out. Imagine trying to cut that out with a scalpel, you'd be going nuts, right? So it sort of, sort of fits up there and lines up with the holes for the lights and that goes on top and then we put on the neopixels and there's sort of a, um, a bit of story behind that as well. Traditional dash lighting relies on individual bulbs lighting up the cluster. That's cool and all. But do you know what's cooler? Neopixels. If you haven't heard of neopixels, these are LEDs that have a red, green and blue element in each pixel. You can change the color of each pixel independently to any color you like. They come in individual pixels, strings, or conveniently for us, rings. The face of the Speedo and Tasho gauge contain indicators like battery, handbrake, and suspension warnings. As we can address each light individually, we can alter the color and state of each of these indicators. So once we've got our lights sorted out, we just sort of clip one into the other. And you can see it just sort of lines up perfectly and with that gasket it stops any of the light leaking out to the rest of the gauge. The driver board's all incorporated in it because I just want to keep the wiring nice and tidy and the plugs can go in as well. I mean you could you don't have to use plugs but if you're swapping and changing around all the time it's just so much easier with plugs. But before they put that on we'll have to put the motor in obviously because the motor will go through the um, the hole there for the needle and just inside here, for mine anyway, just to make life easier as well, the pitch of these pins on the motor uh, matches regular circuit boards, so these are just IC socket pins, which I put into there 
so I can pull the motor in and out as I please and then it sort of all goes together and we chuck on the back piece and you'll see this has got writing on it so if you want to know about this is using toner transfer so if you want to know how to put toner prints straight onto your 3D prints check out this um, video up on the corner go through the process of transferring it on so once we've got all those bits together it looks like this and this is the speedo version of the same dial you can see there's a bit of a white bit around the inside that's just to I printed this outside bit in clear pet G I think it was and just left a white sort of rim inside there so the light can sort of leak through because there's not quite enough light going through there and if you look at the original photo it's got a bit of a gap around the outside and that's what it looks like so we've got two of those and now we're just going to do the smaller ones the assembly for the smaller gauge is pretty much the same as the big gauge just smaller less near pixels but basically same theory gauge front leds and the motor the only standout is the uh, temperature gauge so i've got a boost gauge rev counter speedo and temperature gauge and the temperature gauge doesn't have to move around quite as quickly as the other gauges do so i've opted for the more commonly found uh, Arduino, well not even Arduino, but more commonly found stepper motor, the 28BYJ-48. These are sort of everywhere, it's the, it's the go-to learn how to use stepper motor motor. Problem is it's just too slow, if you check my other videos I'll explain why we're not bothered using that particular motor in this project, the speed just isn't there. So to use this motor it's slightly different to the other 127X motors because it doesn't have a home position for the 127X motors or the proper speedo motors. It's not. It can't do a full rotation. It goes all the way one way and hits a stopper and can't go any further, which is perfect for homing. If you ever want to home it, you just force it to go as far back as it can go and keep on going, and then it's home. For the 28BY J48, it'll just go in circles and circles and circles forever. So we had a little bit of a design change for that one. We had to put an end stop switch in, so. The motor will go all the way to one end, hit the end stop and go back again so it knows where its home position is. So it's definitely possible to use one of these 28 BYJ-48 motors. You could probably get away with using it in the speedo and the and a temperature gauge or a gauge that doesn't need to move too quickly but as far as revs and boosts gauge, they just don't have the pace to do it. So once we had all the gauges together, all I had to do then was to make these little indicator lights and they were a nightmare. The F40 had some unique indicator lamps, and replicating them required a careful process. It began by cutting acrylic with a hole saw. As mentioned earlier, diode lasers can't cut, but can etch clear acrylic. The acrylic piece was placed in a jig to ensure perfect alignment, and painter's tape was applied for the etching process. The text was then etched onto one face of the acrylic. After removing the tape, you can clearly see the engraved text. White enamel paint was used to fill in the engraving, which was left to dry for a few hours to ensure the excess could be removed without damaging the engraving. Once dry, the excess paint was carefully scraped off with a sharp knife and the surface was polished. The back of the acrylic was then flood filled with a deep red translucent paint. After drying, the result was a reasonably accurate replica of the original lamp, ready to be placed in a keeper and installed in the dash. We're on the homeward stretch now, we've got all the bits of the puzzle. I just wanted to put it into a dash, so I made this wooden back and covered it with grey felt. Once that's all done, it was just a case of putting the gauge cluster inside it, screwing it in and turning it on. Are you ready to see it up and running? Do you like free stuff as much as me? If so, down in the show notes, there is a link to my Patreon page, and you can join for free, no charge, ever. Once you click on that, you'll get access to some free STL files including the boost gauge for this project and for a small donation you can get access to the pedals and the gear stick and the handbrake I made in projects recently. In the next part of the video I did a whole lot of audio and it didn't come out very well at all so if you start watching this bit and you think that's weird it's because it is I'll just jump straight into the car running with the gauges on. <laughs>
Thanks for watching.